Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and today I want to talk to you guys about why a lot of people might want to consider uh, using the floor press as a primary chest and tricep exercise. So let me put on my plus five out of weapon smithing. Work on skill at my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. Uh, you know, this is something that comes up a lot in, in the whole bodybuilding world, physique world, things like that, but it also applies to the athletic performance world. Uh, and it's really interesting that oftentimes people act like there's a lot of crossover uh, like bodybuilders and other people know what power lifters and strength athletes do, but then you look at their exercise selection and you realize oftentimes maybe they really don't. Now a perfect example, look how many people out there who are into bodybuilding, they talk about stuff like a mind-muscle connection, they talk about training fairly strict so that they can work the primary movers, right? They're always like, well I need to do this so I can work these primary movers and take out these extra muscles, but then look at the way that they perform exercises. A uh, perfect example, look how many guys out there, and even on YouTube, uh, who talk about stuff like this, right? Watch the way they bench press. How many of them bounce the bar off their chest? Or they do touch and go? Or they lift their ass off the bench? You see it all the time. Now, what's the purpose of touch and go or bouncing? So that your chest doesn't have to work as hard to get the weight started out of the bottom, so that you can use a heavier weight but recruit less muscle fibers doing it so that you can cheat. Same thing, what happens when you lift your ass off the bench? The butt clears the bench and a lot of times people will say, oh that guy, his butt didn't clear the bench when it clearly did. And the reason I say that, again, I've been a powerlifting judge at a few different meets, okay, uh, where I've had to watch for that, where it was my job to actually watch the person's feet and their butt to see if their butt cleared the bench. And it actually clears the bench really easy for anyone who moves their pelvis at all. You'd be surprised how little movement it takes for it to break free. Why do people do that? Because it gets too hard at the bottom and if you move your butt, what happens? You end up shaking and moving the bar up a little bit. It will let you sometimes add five to ten more pounds, sometimes more depending on how much, how excessive you are with it, out of the bottom that you can't lift out of the bottom. Well what muscles get the weight started out of the bottom on a bench press? Your pecs, and your front delts. So you're actually robbing them of work uh, so that you can do that. It's so that they can, uh, you can lift a heavier weight than you're really capable of lifting. But you're not really working the primary movers effectively when you do that. Now this same thing can be thought of in a lot of different exercises. Um, but here's what power lifters do. They do a floor press when they need to bring up their chest, uh, front delts, all that stuff because they're weak links for their bench press. I mean, a lot of them will do pause benching. Pause benching itself is pure specificity of training. But if they want to add an accessory movement in, uh, guys use the floor press. Why use the floor press? Because it basically removes the ability for you to cheat. It removes the ability for you to use leg drive. It removes the ability of you to do use bounce and you don't have a soft touch. You are at a hard stop at the bottom. Uh, and because of that, it will also teach you to not bounce the weight. Why? Because it hurts. If you hit the ground too hard on a floor press, your arms, you're at the bottom of a floor press when your arms hit the floor. Now for me, I can sometimes touch my chest. If I have full lungs, I can touch my chest on a floor press, even with uh, the 45 pound or 20 kilo plates. Some people, it's gonna be above their chest. But when your triceps hit the floor, you're at the bottom no matter what. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you hit the floor hard with a heavy weight, 200 pounds, 250, 300, and your triceps hit the floor hard, it hurts. It hurts your elbows really bad if you try to do it real hard touch and go. So the whole point is you have to come to a complete stop uh, and you can't use any leg drive to get the weight started. You can't use leg drive to get the weight started. So. What happens? What happens when you have to start the weight? You can't use any leg drive. It is basically the strictest form of chest press you can possibly do. Well, because the chest has to work very hard to get the weight moving. It, it forces you to recruit your pectorals harder to get the weight started, to get that starting strength going. Now, it's a great way to build starting strength. It's a great way to remove leg drive. And now leg drive is necessary, and I don't want people to say I'm telling you not to ever use leg drive if you're gonna compete in powerlifting, because leg drive is necessary sometimes to get the weight started when you are trying to go for a competition max. But is that the best way uh, to build up your pecs? Best way to build up your delts and everything to make you stronger on the bench? Probably not. There's a long history with the floor press, and we'll get into that in a little bit in a minute. 
Uh, so what you see among a lot of power lifters, they'll do different accessories and they'll know when their max has gone up when certain accessories go up. And that's a key indicator. Uh, again, you'll see a lot of power lifters who do the floor press and when they hit a PR on their floor press, meaning they've either added reps or they had the ability to add five or 10 pounds for say their five rep sets or whatever they're doing. Let's say they've been able to do 275 for five reps when they had been stuck at 265 for four or five on the floor press, what will that tell you? That means that they've gained significant size, enough size in their pecs and their front delts to do what? To move the heavier weight because it's a strict movement and they're usually doing rep work with it. It's a strict movement. Now, some people will say, for some people it will be a partial, well, for some people it will, for some people it won't, but here's the thing. Bring your grip in closer, do a close grip on it, and it makes it a longer range of motion exercise. Uh, so if you're really trying to, to build everything up the most and do the most work possible and make everything work as hard as possible for some sort of chest press, do a close grip floor press. But generally speaking, though, it is an indicator for a lot of power lifters that their max bench will go up. Because usually you can lift more weight on your pause bench uh, when you're meat legal, when you use your leg drive to get it started, then you can do on that strict floor press. But if you're really and truly trying to put tension on those primary movers because you really need to bring them up because they're a weak link for you, the floor press is perfect. Floor press is perfect because it removes the ability to bring a lot of other muscles into play. It removes your ability to do those things. It removes your ability to bounce. It removes your ability to use leg drive, and accordingly, those muscles have to do all the work, and more importantly, they have to do all the work from a dead stop. And we know that moving up relatively heavy weight from a dead stop with no inertia, uh, no ability to use any other drive in it, uh, recruits a tremendous number of muscle fibers. Starting strength, getting a heavy weight moving, usually recruits an enormous amount of muscle fibers. And because of the way you have to do it, you're removing a lot of the uh, eccentric concentric chain you're moving oftentimes your ability to, to use stored energy coming down uh, to move the weight up everything has to be recruited from a dead stop and it forces you to learn to get tighter at the bottom and to be more explosive at the bottom which works the, pe the pectorals tremendously so uh, for people who are trying to do this stuff it doesn't make any sense though that they, they do the bench press and then they balance lift their ass and everything they're just ego lifting they're not necessarily building the muscles that they're wanting to build up through the actual strength training to the degree that they could um, and it's interesting because the the floor press is the original version of the bench press floor press is the original version because people didn't have a bench forever you guys honestly think when people first started lifting they always had a bench or a rack no this is stuff they learned to do over the years that people invented because someone out there said hey uh, there has to be a way to get this into position easier it's got to be an easier way to do this but for decades people did a floor press that's what they had with a barbell you know they had a floor press had someone hand it to them or put it on blocks to roll it over or just found a way to get under it and got under there and did the floor press it is actually the original bench press so it, it is the original OG version and it still works very well to this day and many champion power lifters use it a lot of people with massive chests and uh, delts use it uh, for people who are again trying to be purely strict if you really wanted to dig in and isolate those muscles better which you see so many people talk about but then they don't train in a way that isolates them uh, this is one that forces you to do it you know there's a lot of exercises of you could say oh well, I'm doing this strict training but you're swinging and swaying and you know you'll see guys who do concentration girls who use their whole body on it when they're down there at the bottom uh, you know again people who think they're doing something to isolate muscles and they really aren't uh, floor press is one of those versions of the chest press that forces you to do so. In fact, I would say it forces you to do so more strictly than even a machine press. Because on machine presses, people can slide. They can slide and move. When you're stuck to that rubber on the floor with the weight above you, it's actually much harder to do that shifting movement where you shift under it when it gets hard. It's far more difficult. And on a lot of machines, people still bounce them at the bottom because you've got those rubber stoppers to bounce off, off of. They're using a lot of balance, a lot of inertia. You can't do that with the floor press. Well, you can, but you're not going to do it many times before you hurt yourself because it hurts. It hurts when you do that. So I would go so far as to say that even the reason people do a lot of these uh, machine presses, hammer strength machines and stuff, for their, their chest presses, 
the floor press is actually better at it for the very for the very reasons uh, that they're trying to use the machine. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.